Greetings, Year 12, or indeed Year 13, because you might be viewing this video in the second year of your course. Um, we're going to have a look at the Statement of Intent, which is a really super important document for your NEA coursework, because if you don't have it, then you get smashed on the mark scheme, and everything you create, they think you just did by a sheer fluke of luck. Uh, whereas you have to express that you deliberately made all of your media language and representation choices for your very particular target audience and industrial player set out by the brief. So we can make this fairly easy for ourselves by considering this statement of intent as using the language that we would normally use for media studies analysis but in the future tense that's the best way of thinking about it okay so you're going to go through and you're going to pick out a couple of representations that you're going to make in your product one right your product one is say your magazine and contents page that all of that stuff counts as product one product two is the website okay and, and the second page of the website as well but you're going to point out a couple of representations yeah, you're going to have the values and type that you create, as we very often discuss. But it will be represented as, or it will be constructed. So let's have a look. Women will be constructed as counter-typically empowered through a low angle shot of a black woman looking upwards towards the heavens with a city skyline behind her. Right? So suddenly you've got the representational idea, and then you've supported it with what you will be doing in your photography, and then you will go and shoot that with the media language that can be very much more about the mood you're trying to create the kind of experience you're trying to create for your magazine so you're trying to create something in the case of current affairs magazines that is informative and serious or urgent and on trend so it might be that you're going to point out i'm going to use a particular use of i don't know sans serif fonts and an ordered layout but with spot color in a kind of acid orange against white and black that's easily readable at a glance on a mobile device so it's very much like you're thinking ahead to what you're going to do and you're saying what you're going to do in advance then you're going to link that across to who the audience is and what they're going to go and get out of it all right so we can use this allows this offers this gives remember that magazine covers promise and the contents pages guide but the articles themselves give the audience that informative experience that about issues they identify with and then also you can see how you can easily discuss what you will be offering your publisher so for current affairs magazines it's Dennis publishing but every year um, they always give the industrial player you're meant to be um, catering for in the brief it doesn't matter what brief it is so even though today I'm going to focus on uh, the current affairs magazines bear in mind that this will be the case for TV or radio or whoever so you can use those sentence starters and you can go and get them up on YouTube and just leave them there and then you can start to populate your own statement of intent using those sentence starters plus plugging in your own ideas right I've also provided you with some models yeah three models one's a fashion magazine one's an entertainment magazine but the use of the future tense and the use of the detail about what they will be creating in terms of their media language and representations linking across to the other key concepts is exactly what you need so bear in mind that it's the technique that they're using that's better okay so the rules are write it in the future tense you are used to writing analysis in the active present tense um, so use the sentence starters state what you will do with the media language and the representations I would go for a couple of combos of media language you'll use I know that there's a couple of representations that you're asked to create in your brief um, two different representations are in there so you might want to think about the representation of women or the representation of race or maybe some other minority in some way maybe disability or like, because it is really a focus on representation of social groups 
whereas they do tend to have representation of issues as uh, a thing they quite often do in current affairs magazines. So there's something where you're going to have to deliberately say something about two social groups. It's a bit contrived, but that's what they need for the NEA. Um, give examples to support these media language representation points. So you're going to be talking about your suggestions for what are your headlines going to be? What are your choice of fonts going to be? What are your color palettes going to be? What about your layout? What about your Lexis? What about the mise-en-scene of the images that you're going to have? Do state what you're going to do. You can't state everything. Yeah, You really can't state everything that's going to be on all of your pages, but really give a really strong flavor of what you're going to do and if there's anything in particular you're going to go and do that's a bit of a special move then make sure you get that in your statement of intent because then it really shows that you have got a real insight into the subject and you're doing this through your practical work i've said before make links across to the target audience from the brief in detail and their response so each year you are given a particular target audience i believe for current affairs it's meant to be uh, an actively kind of engaged 16 to 25 year old audience who are going to be you know, smart and on the beat um, and with that you know you need to get in their heads about having empowering information maybe that they can use to make better decisions to have a more successful life because they are smart dudes this isn't a mass market audience that maybe wants to be guided through trends it's about being on like the bleeding edge of things instead with the current affairs kind of youth audience um, that they've asked for and then really at the end of your um, product one and product two, you want to be able to talk about the revenue streams and how this is whatever you're offering is going to benefit the revenue streams of your publisher or your creator. What's the ultimate benefit of that? Now we're talking publishers here, but if we were talking about another brief, say the TV brief, then you might want to think about how that might drive, say, subscriptions for some sort of pay-per-view kind of channel or well, when I say channel, I mean web-based service like a Netflix maybe, or an advertising funded thing for say ITV that are mainly a commercial broadcaster. It's those kind of things. So really get to the business. What is the business benefit of product one? What is the business benefit of product two? And ultimately, it's not rocket science. That is to say, be inspired, quote, quote unquote, by other publications, or should I say, Nick, quote unquote from other publications this needs to be something where a lot of what learning is is stealing from other people it could be learning guitar it could be learning kung fu it could be learning how to cook it's what do they do what can i do that they do in my one so whatever you've come across in your research um, then you can start to turn that around in the future tense and use it in yours now, I would say at this early stage that you want to work towards this in what you create, but you will find that a statement of intent is a very artificial document. That is to say that you don't normally have a document that says, right, I'm going to do all of these things and now I'm going to go and do it. And then you do it. What normally happens in media studies and has done for decades is that people make things, they have a plan. And then they make things that are you know, technically very competent and verging on professional standards. And then they evaluate the effectiveness of it. They normally sort of discuss it in retrospect and what went well and even better if for targeting their audience and what they weren't quite able to do with maybe their media language and representations. So what I would say to you guys is you guys are going to make a plan. And this is going to really help your plan for what you're going to do. You're going to make it, but you're going to make changes on the fly. You're going to make changes. And you might come across a great happy accident of an iconic photo that you're going to use for your main headline. And you might find that you've got a really nice iconic image that you didn't know you were going to have before that you've gone and constructed. And that's going to be your second page. But plan it using this. Let the happy accidents happen and then you're going to go back to this statement of intent and then you're going to go and edit it afterwards. So one of the things you need to do at this stage is have this as a Word document um, that you can not, you know, easily edit um, and then you're going to submit that. But I'm also going to ask you guys to submit the Word document and it plugged into the um, PDF document as well because that's how it should wind up with the board that's how you're really going to go and give it in um, at the end of the unit and i want you to become aware of the word document is much more malleable and you can type in and move stuff around 
but the PDF document sucks. Like it's got no um, no formatting on it and destroys the formatting that you have from a Word document. So I would say to you guys, have both of those in. Show me that you have a Word document that you can edit and that you know that it's gonna go in a PDF format. I will take those both from you in the early part of this unit that's at the end of year 12. Okay, so I nearly forgot about it, but I didn't because it's there on the page the cross-media synergy there is a third section to the statement of intent product one tends to be the main product so and the magazines one it is the magazine covers and the contents pages uh, if it were radio it would be the main radio product um, if you then move to product two that will be the the web-based accompaniment to it that you're going to have some kind of synergy with then there is this third section about how you will offer a real close cross-media synergy and that comes down to two things that's where you're directly going to mention and discuss how they will be linked by house style now house style we've talked about before you're saying well across both my website and my magazine say they're going to have this some similar color palette maybe they might have the same use of iconic images certainly the same use of fonts fonts are absolutely critical in terms of maybe the main masthead font being unique as your brand and then maybe the choice of certain serif or sans serif fonts for your body text across both that gives it a really consistent look and also you'll have like strap lines that kind of um that tagline, that kind of uh, repeated phrase that defines the brand, and even headlines, you might find very often that you've got content on the print magazine that's going to be echoed um, in the web page and the second page article on your website. All right, so make sure that you express you having a same house style in that third section. And also, and this is super important because it is one of the production details that if you don't have, you'll get smashed. Um, was the calls to action, right? So somewhere you're going to have the beckoning the audience towards the website for maybe further content. Say you had a magazine, you might have podcast content or more up-to-date content on the website. Likewise, if you're on the website, they're going to have some kind of call to action to subscribe to the magazine in print and digitally because that is the main way they make money, right? Like either through print subscriptions, display advertising revenue, but certainly with our current affairs magazines that we happen to be talking about now, they do love some kind of soft or hard paywall. And you wanna have a mention that, you know, if they subscribe uh, and get rid of the paywall, then they'll also get maybe a paper copy um, to their house. But probably for your 16 to 25 year olds thinking about it, some kind of ebook pdf version that's going to have all of the formatting on it rather than just the app okay so it's at this point i think it's best that you have a look at the three examples i've given you and here's an example of one of them for the aura entertainment magazine and i'm going to put up some of the uh, front covers and the contents page that go with this but this should give you an idea of the tone of the language um, that you will see this student goes through each magazine in turn with the key concepts, pretty much using those sentence starters. Occasionally she gets a bit describey. So let's have a look here. Uh, for my magazine front covers, I will use media language to create an exciting and engaging brand identity. Right, so there's kind of the ideas bubbles. Uh, but how is she gonna go and use actual stuff on the page? I will do this by using the Schoolholic font, which is bold and therefore eye-catching to my target audience. My first cover will engage the audience by using an iconic image of the cover model partaking in direct address along with a black background. This highlights the powerful presence uh, his powerful presence as a rapper. This will appeal to the target audience as the main cell line, the darkness of Jordan Maynard, promises them exclusive insight into a popular and influential celebrity. Good. So she's gone in there. She's gone in there with the font. She's gone in there with the mise-en-scene and the facial expression and the body language of uh, her rapper. And she's linked it very quickly across to audience. Then she goes into the realms of representation, whereas previously it was very much the visual language, the media language on the page. This creates a positive, counter-typical representation of black men as he is portrayed as dominant and successful due to the low angle shot. 
right, so she's gone in there and dominant and successful. There's your values. Your type is a counter type. Uh, above him will be Aura's logo, which will be in purple. In the top right, there will be a circle and an image of Kai Hope, and underneath it will be the main cell line, Kai Hope, a revelation uh, in white. This will encourage the audience to read the magazine as it gives them a taste of the contents. All right, it's a bit poorly worded, but she's going from representation through kind of a bit to media language and audience appeal. On the left-hand side, there will be a list of stories included in the magazine, such as Max and Cara in uh, the white font with a purple glow, or just purple font, so she's not quite sure here, but certainly she's in the realms of media language. In my second cover, there will be the same format, but the logo date and issue number will be in red, as it is the Halloween issue. Um, okay, so there's some idea about meaning created by media language on the page. The iconic cover image will be four friends, two white boys and two white girls, laying in a circle. They have a smiley and joyful direct address, which provides the audience with a sense of warmth and positivity the magazine aims to provide. The main cell line will be placed in the bottom gap between their heads and will state the seeds of the Big Apple as the actors play the leading roles in an upcoming movie about life in New York. Okay, so there's some sort of promise uh, of information there for the audience and the creation of a sense of warmth and positivity to invite the audience in. So these are sort of a bit sub and a bit less than something like uses and gratifications theory, but they're still mood and meaning for the audience. Um, I've got to tell you the truth about this, boys and girls. She wrote this one after she'd gone and uh, had a really nice sort of foreshot that she'd lit in the photography studio. Uh, and to finish it off, beneath the main cell line will be a circle with an image of two girls with the cell line TV's favourite sisters. There will also be a call to action on both covers for the website so that even if the young tech-savvy audience don't buy the magazine, they can still engage with it. Right, that's just the two front covers dealt with but she's really gone and dealt with the media language she's really gone and dealt with and in some type of ways it's descriptive she's really gone and done with the representation certainly of her uh rapper guy in terms of being a counter type and in terms of she hasn't really dealt with the representation of the young people as joyful and whatnot but you could easily do that and move that into you know a a counter typical representation of young people as socially engaged and uh, warm and welcoming could be a representational point. Representation points, remember, are media language points in reverse. Point out the idea they are constructing about the world first and then back it. Whereas media language is there's that on the page and it creates those ideas. Um, so you know that's kind of the the reverse way around. She hasn't done much in terms of industrial stuff apart from thinking about the call to action um, and getting the audience, which sort of focused the audience aspect on that. I think there's definitely some room here. Um, it's certainly in that first paragraph about the role of a front cover in selling the magazine to its audience. It is a truism that a front cover of a magazine has a massive influence on sales in terms of engaging the audience with a topic they're interested in, an aspirational figure, um, if it's some sort of star, for example, and really raising some issues of sales by like 100%. Okay, so that was very much the flavour of the sort of analysis that you'll have on product one and product two. Obviously, if you read through the rest of it, you'll see she's done a very similar thing uh, elsewhere in her product one and product two statement of intent. So we're now on the cross media synergy, that last bit that also needs to get dealt with. And there is 10 marks in this. The way the coursework is marked is you get marks for the sort of key concepts, uh, things that you've done. Well done, you've used correct media language. Well done, you've got the right kind of representations in there uh, and audience responses. And you've thought about the industry kind of um, business model that you were trying to work with. But then there's also a little bunch of 10 marks for the productions that you make of making sure it's proper linked across the two with the cross media synergy. I will create a shared house style across both my products by using a neutral color palette of white, black and purple or red. I will use the school holic font across all my products to create further brand familiarity, I think she wants to say there. Uh, my products also link by sharing the same stories and iconic photos. I think we can say the same is true of yours. There is also a link to my website on my cover and contents pages to further promote the online use of our magazine. On my website there will also be the photos of other magazine covers to insist the purchase of the physical magazine. So she's got a bit of a raw way of saying it but she's very much on top of what she's put in it. 
My products also link as I use the same section names, TV, music, etc., and the same stories in the same format. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, but it's those things. What's the same across both? And we know that our color palette might be the same across both. Um, your use of Lexis might be the same across both. The use of font might be the same across both. The choice of iconic images and headlines in some way might be the same across both, although the cell lines on the front cover might be different to the headlines on the website, but still the same news agenda, if you will. Definitely, actually, you can totally use that news agenda uh, for current affairs uh, magazines. And of course, those links between the motivating the audience, those calls to action uh, between the maybe the front cover, but definitely the contents page, getting them to then get some more content online on the website and from the website to some kind of digital subscription. As we said before, probably to an electronic magazine version of the publication rather than a print book that a 16 to 25 year old will never pick up. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you once more with these sentence starters up here, these future tense sentence starters. The only thing so far we've missed is her ability to discuss um, the benefit to Dennis Publishing or the publisher, in your case it's Dennis Publishing this year with um, the current affairs magazines. But really with that, let's think about the revenue streams, think about display advertising, um, think about the ability to be a member or have a subscription. Um, that's really where you want to get people to um, engage with your brand and part with cash or be marketed to through the um, tower adverts and the banner adverts that they, they, they sell. Admittedly, as we've said, display advertising online is not a great portion of the money that they make. So they're going to be looking much more for those sort of subscriptions through a soft or hard paywall um, because we know that online advertising is only worth 10% of print advertising for the same reach. So what you'll find is that with a lot of these kind of current affairs magazines, and I was told this the other day by a well-informed friend, is that if you have an article on say Forbes, uh, which in Forbes is a sort of a well-known kind of uh, current affairs uh, website, apparently they only get paid like $30 for like, I think it's about 800 words article. You know what I mean? It's a very low revenue business and people are just willing to say I got published in Forbes as a contributor. So between those sentence starters and the other models I'm going to give you, that's where you need to be with the statement of intent. The statement of intent needs to come in at the end of term. The three analysis that I've asked you for needs to come in at the end of the term. If you don't have those, I've separated those off, they are literally looking for those against the marks you get in your coursework. And if you don't have those, you get smashed on the mark scheme. We also want your first draft plans for your products because we need to say which way you're headed. And that can actually help with your other sort of research as well because it is planning. It shows you know what you were doing in advance. We know that it's a mailable process. We know that you're going to go and go back and have another stab at your statement of intent once you've made changes to the product that you've made. But it's a game that we're playing with the exam board. But it's app. I cannot tell you how important it is. If you've got any questions, obviously you can email me on it, but I'm hoping that by going through it and you having so many resources around you with those sentence starters, you can just crack on and basically whatever you've discussed in the analysis, you're gonna kind of put in yours. I would say with your ones, that they're going to be a little bit more vibrant and a bit more edgy than things like The Economist and The Spectator. So there might be more of a reliance on, say, sans serif fonts, maybe more sort of angled use of those fonts to give a bit of a more of a, you know, a bit of a pop vibe or something. But we're not, we are talking about serious topics here for young people that want to lead effective lives. All right, so till next time, ta-ta.